Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, we are going to be talking about the Fire Knight tournament uh, going on right here, where you can only use champions from a specific, fa well, specific factions, and those are going to be uh, factions in the Nyresian Union, which is a little bit challenging because there is only two factions in the Nyresian Union, going to be just the two newest factions in the game, the Dwarves and the Shadowkin, so I have put together a team to go ahead and tackle this event. I'll walk you through the thought process that I was uh, putting together uh, when trying to come up with a team to use and go after this because it looks like it could be an opportunity for some cheap resources here in terms of a shard and some charms and some relentless gear because I anticipate the groups will not be uh, that fought after because it is kind of a difficult event with only two factions in one of the harder dungeons to do efficiently in the Fire Knight. So that's what we're going to discuss here. Let's get into it. Alrighty, and first of all, uh, whenever I do a video like this, I really enjoy pulling up this very handy chart that illustrates or helps me illustrate the point to you that you don't have to pressure yourself into doing stage 24 or 25, even though uh, they are great for acquiring some of that gear. If you are just trying to get points, like you're trying to win a tournament down here uh, right now, you can see that we are getting more points here on stage 20 than even on stage 25 or 24. 24 is actually a little bit better here uh, if you're trying to get the best blend of like points and gear per energy spent in a tournament like this you may want to do stage 24 but uh it, it, obviously you're getting even more on stage 20 if your goal is to kind of do well in the tournament so do not feel bad I, I say all this uh just to let you know don't feel bad about scaling it back a little bit uh you can do stage 15 stage 20 uh if you're just going for finishing high in an event to complete a tournament like this there is absolutely nothing wrong with lowering the level a little bit and doing one that makes sense based on the champions you are using Using, getting all the affinities to line up and stuff like that. And as you can see, I ended up on stage 18 because I'm using a lot of magic champions and I wanted it to be uh, one of those stages kind of close to stage 20 just to be able to blast through it in like a minute and a half or so uh, and just go ahead and tackle this tournament as easy as possible. So first I'll show you my team and, and, and why I'm using them. And then we will also dive into some of the other champions in these two factions that maybe you could consider uh, throwing together as part of your squad. So I went with Gala. Uh, she can grant an extra turn. She can do some self-sustain. She can crank out some damage, ignore some defense, a pretty solid candidate to fill the aura and also helping me get a lot of multi-hitters in terms of breaking the shield. Ninja, obviously uh, gonna be great against the Spirit Affinity and do a bunch of damage. Uh, Herndig, same vein as Ninja. And then we've got Lady Kimmy uh, for the different speed manipulation that she is going to do to help me crank out a lot more turns than the Dungeon Waves and the Fire Knight. And then uh, Torment also has multi-hitter as well. And he can just kind of uh, make sure I keep my Gala at full health so that she can get extra turns because of his provoke mechanics and stuff like that. He's also got some decently fast animations. I actually did try other things like a Trunda or something in place of Torment. And believe it or not, uh, I was getting uh, basically dead even uh, runs. It wasn't really mattering. If anything, this team ended up being slightly faster for whatever reason. Trunda, you know, running up with all those melee animations, uh, but she does do a decent amount of damage, but it ended up really kind of being a wash. So I did definitely try to replace Tormund with another damage dealer, but uh, didn't really need to. So now you can see uh, that team in action and get the uh, and get the different stats down there on the bottom right. This is some recorded footage I, I, I took while I was uh, kind of doing this run. So uh, it was pretty simple. Uh, you know, the waves make sense. They're all spirit affinity. I designed the team to kind of be strong around uh, taking that down. Not a whole lot to explain. What, what you're trying to do is get through the waves as fast as possible. There really isn't someone like a Seer and a Kaimar and all that sort of fancy stuff uh, to be to be or Zavia for like for like detonating poisons. Uh, we don't really get a whole lot of mechanics like that for uh these two factions so you're looking to just do a bunch of damage break their defense blast down the waves kind of old school and standard and then when you get to the fire knight you want to have enough hits to uh break through the shield uh maybe a little bit of turn meter uh reduction and and also some things that are going to hit super hard so you can hopefully ideally take down the fire knight before he is able to get his shield back because that is really gonna that, that can like double the length of your run so very important once you've got the shield down uh to be able to blast through and you'll see uh mine can here i got the shield down right there and then now we get that massive ability uh ended up getting pretty lucky there uh from herndig to go ahead and deplete the turn meter you see uh god popping off with the extra turns able to do a decent amount of damage the quick animation there from Tormund 
ninja uh bringing the utility and the damage and then we end up uh being able to do this here in about a minute and a half uh because of uh being able to blast him down before he can get his shield back we had just enough damage and turn meter reduction uh in the squad to go ahead and break it through and keep it pretty efficient as long as you're anywhere you know around two two and a half minutes it's not that bad i don't anticipate this event to be super highly contested and that ability that you saw popping off from Herndig was the Stasis Strike. Attack one enemy and fully deplete the turn meter. Uh, if you get some good RNG, that can make or break, uh, just demolish the run if you get him to do that. Uh, while the Fire Knight's shield is down and he's got a decent amount of turn meter, boom, you can slap it all the way back to zero and, and continue running. Ninja also has some really cool stuff. The defense break on the A1, going to be super consistent. Uh, get, has a lot of value versus bosses. You can see when targeting a boss, uh, is going to ignore defense. Also decrease the cooldown of the hail burn skill here that is going to be popping off with tons of damage. So and everything ended up kind of synergizing decently well. Then we can kind of go through and talk about maybe some of the non-legendary options to uh, keep in mind. Like we talked about Gala, a pretty solid damage dealer here uh, because of all the multi-hitters that she has going on with the A3 and the A1 uh, with the self-shielding sustain and ignoring defense and, and bringing the aura and doing a bunch of damage. But in terms of some of the other ones to watch out, uh, there, there are a few uh, other decent non-legendary options in these two factions. You've got Filja uh, right here with the multi-hitter A1 that is also going to be having an A2 that fully depletes the term here. that's obviously as you saw with herndig a very very good role to bring in a tournament like this just to make sure he's not getting that shield back and she is one that can do it as well and also a lot of you probably have a geomancer build because he is one of the better dps epics in the game he's also got this a3 here that will fully deplete the target's turn meter and fill the champion's turn meter by the amount the target loses so geomancer could also uh, do a great job in suppressing some turn meter on the fire knight you've also got fodbor right here with the triple hitter a1 which is always great uh versus the fire knight shield and uh he can also break the defense as well here on the a3 then if we go over to the Shadowkin, there isn't a ton of amazing options for non-legendaries in the Shadowkin, but uh, there are some noteworthy ones like Fenchy with a triple hitter A1 that decreases speed on the big version. That's an awesome ability for the Fire Knight. You've also got another triple hitter that is going to decrease the target's turn meter and another multi-hitter uh, for cranking out damage. So Fenchy, uh, if you're looking for a non-legendary option in the Shadowkin for a tournament like this with the Fire Knight, Fenchy is definitely the first one that would come to my mind. Other than that, there's some decent ones uh, in terms of doing some like multi hitters from Umatoji and you know, Gori's got got some multi hitters. You know the two and the three, uh, a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, you know Jurajin. I don't know about that one honestly, but yeah, uh, like Fenchi is definitely the Genbo's more of a of an AOE. He does have a multi hitter A1 though, uh, which is nice, and he gets an extra turn. It can kind of help you do a bunch of damage uh, to the waves as well. But Fenchi is definitely the one that stands out. The uh, the, the rares for the Shadowkin, uh, unfortunately, are not that great. You do have Life Taker here with a bunch of multi-hitters, like the double on the A1 and the triple on the A3 that can also place a decreased speed. Uh, but other than that, there's really not a whole uh, a lot of other noteworthy things here to speak of for the Shadowkin rares in the context of a tournament like this. So yeah, that's most of my thought process when it comes to uh, this this Fire Knight tournament and hopefully trying to scoop up uh, some cheap resources to be efficient with how we're managing uh, our account. And if you wanted to see, there is the different stats for the different champions that I was using uh, for this tournament. So you can see uh, kind of the gear requirements for what I was trying to pull off. And then hopefully, um, if I missed any champions that you think should have been mentioned, uh, let us know down in the comment section. I really enjoy reading your input as well. If I missed anybody that deserves an honorable mention and stuff like this or uh, what teams you are using and what you think about this tournament in general I always enjoy that feedback as well so that's going to do it for me on this one and as always thank you for watching have a good rest of your day peace